so good morning chess friends i am back again with another video and this time instead of continuing with my mura series uh, i am going to show you something else and that is related to some chess tactics so today we are what we are going to see is uh, called windmill in chess and on one of my friends request who is an intermediate level player uh, and want to learn more about the game so on his request i am making this video about the windmill ideas in chess and it is a kind of motive that uh, usually occurs uh, many time in your regular chess games so you can if you know this tactic very well you can use it against your opponent in uh, your game so what exactly is a windmill so it is an idea or, or motive in chess that can occur time to time in uh, different possible combinations uh, usually with bishop and rook but sometimes uh, with knight and bishop or queen and rook and some other ideas also uh, works well so let's have a look at the first example we are going to see some examples uh, that i created and uh, just for this lecture and modified some old examples for detailed analysis and we are also are going to see some real game examples so in this position it is now black to move and uh, white king in this position right now doesn't have any legal square so even if it is white's move white cannot move his king to any place so in this position if black has to move black can win lot of material using this win windmill tactic so here bishop on e4 square is eyeing black king so once the rook moves it is a check so rook uh, really can go anywhere and without worrying about being captured so the next move in the uh, example is rook takes a2 and this is a discovered check to white king bishop on e4 so now white king has only one legal square and white cannot capture the rook on a2 because uh, white king is under the check so first he has to move out of the check so king has only one legal square that is g1 so king moves to g1 now we can again use our rook to deliver check and now again white king has only one uh, legal square to go that is h1 so what happened at uh, uh, in this uh, last one move that uh, pawn on a2 disappeared but we reach the same position again so and this rotates until it can rotate uh, infinitely if black wants uh, draw but here black can win much more material using this same tactic so next move is rook to b2 again bishop delivering check king goes back to a1 only legal square and rook captures here rook can capture on b3 bishop and now here black uh, white can give a check to black king but uh, this is winning position we can see black has two extra pawns and a bishop so this is easily winning for black but here there is uh, another exercise for a slightly advanced players so let's go to the first position here there is another line that is better than rook takes e2 that is rook to e2 check and here we have a force mate in five moves so you also can use this same tactic to uh, checkmate your opponent not only winning material but sometime you can use this to checkmate your opponent also 
here king has only one legal square that is g1 now h3 so now what is threatened is simple thing h2 checkmate so how to stop that white uh, king cannot go to h1 square because bishop is there so a token move can be made if you it, it actually is resignable situation but if you want to continue you can move make a move like uh, rook to f3 blockading the bishop eyeing h1 square only square for available for black king but now black king has two available square as uh, rook just vacated f1 also so when bishop takes f3 black king has only one legal square so if white king moves uh, white moves something like a3 makes a move something like a3 then h2 check this is forced and now you can either promote to queen or rook and this is a checkmate so you can use windmill to win material and sometimes you even can checkmate your opponent if uh, position is good in the second video we are going to have a look at this uh, complicated position here material is equal and it is white to move so here in this position if uh, you want to pause the video you can pause it for 10 20 seconds and you may check uh, what to do for black oh, sorry white and here what basically what uh, is going to happen is uh, a windmill scenario with uh, bishop on b2 and knight delivering checks on f6 square so what was uh, what is the best move in this position is queen takes d7 now here if queen takes e4 then this is uh, winning for white easily as white is going to be a piece up so practical solution is queen takes d7 and here knight f6 so now black king has only one legal square that is king h8 and when king is on h8 knight can capture either rook or queen and bishop on b2 is going to deliver a check on the long diagonal this is a discovered check by bishop and there is no way black can white can uh, sorry black can stop this check but to move the king so king moves to g8 again the same check now again black king has only one legal square that is h8 knight takes d7 so queen is gone king back to g8 again knight delivers the check again only one legal square now king can go to h7 but here also after the check king has to move back to h8 another pawn gone same check king moves back to h8 knight goes to d7 again check only legal move that may defend the rook is king g8 and after this white is clearly better because uh, white has two extra rooks so the whole idea of this windmill started with queen takes d7 because here if knight moves to f6 square delivering a check directly then um, black knight can capture white knight on f6 and then position is uh, almost equal but this queen takes d7 forces the following line 
that perfectly demonstrates the power of windmill you can see all these moves are forced lacking has no other option and in the third game uh, we are going to see a game between Cooper Fresh and Anderson and it was played in 1953 in Denmark so let's check out that game in this game this actually is a long game with wild tactical sequence so I'm not going to go through all the opening theory but we are just going to have a look at the windmill scenario here so I'm just shipping through the moves and bishop takes on g2 took takes bishop takes and here white uses his uh, rook uh, sorry uh, his uh, bishop and knight for the windmill so this is the beginning of the knight goes to c8 square bishop back to c6 check pawn captured check rook captured rook is gone and here in this position actually black resigned because um, there is no way black can stop white king to explore the queen side and shepherd one of the a or b pawn to queen and here black king is actually stalemated because there is no legal move and because of that black rook is also trapped and there is no way black can black can force uh, white king to stop uh, from exploring the queen side and here there is uh, no stalemates because black can first sacrifice e and g pawns and then black has a light square bishop to make legal moves so here this is an easy win for white so in this position black actually resigned anderson resigned another example is tore versus emmanuel lasker carlos tore uh, famous uh, tore attack is named after him so this game is quite old this was played in 1925 in moscow Tore playing white, Lasker black. Quiet opening. Not much action. Maneuvering pieces. And here, black uh, king is slightly in trouble because f7 and h7 both pawns are attacked so taking the knight is only good move here now black what black did is black pinned the uh, uh, white bishop on g5 square so if the bishop moves then queen falls First white played the b4 move to kick the queen away. Queen preferred, uh, black preferred to keep uh, queen on fifth rank. So Lasker mode is queen to f5 square, rook to g3. Now indirectly eyeing g7 pawn and here bishop is attacked here bishop cannot be captured uh, and that is because of uh, rook will recapture and black queen has no good place to go 
so green move back knight on e3 attacking queen queen again move and an amazing move bishop f6 was played here black can capture the white queen but then black falls for the windmill and black cannot prevent it if uh, black plays something else then windmill actually will happen in any case so Lasker captured queen rook takes g7 and white up uh, sorry black king has only one legal square that is h8 after that rook captures f7 pawn and you can see black is losing material with force moves and here in this position rook uh, g5 was played to capture the queen but if here rook captures a7 pawn then it is not a good move because uh, you can still continue with the windmill but then the a file will be open for the black rooks and a2 pawn is eventually going to fall so there is no point in taking a7 pawn and activating black rooks so and in the final position now white is 3 pawn up and this is easily winning position so after few moves Alaska resign in this position because it is eventually a checkmate that he cannot avoid and all this happened because of the bishop f6 move in this position here to remove bishop to f6 hanging his queen then lasker has to capture there is no other option and the wind will happen as you can see and all this were force moves so you can use this tactic in your games if you find any position that uh, has this kind of motif that you can use successfully against your op opponent and in the final game fifth game we are going to have a very look at a very famous game that is by Robert James Fisher Bobby Fisher and this is a quite an old game and this game was played in 1956 in uh, in New York in third Rosenwald trophy and this game is dubbed as game of the century by many chess historians and experts and Bobby Fischer played with black pieces against Donald Bryan international master so let's flip the board we are going to zip through the opening moves because again we just want to have a look at the windmill so here in this position actually Fisher was planning to s sacrifice his queen to achieve a windmill so he played rook to e8 check first king moved to f1 getting out of a uh, check no other move is better than what was played in this position king to f1 is probably the best move bishop back and queen is now offered to achieve a windmill with the help of bishop and uh, knight so 
Donald Bryan has nothing better but to capture queen on b6 so queen was captured and here bishop takes c4 check now black king has only one legal square and now the windmill started with the black knight jumping into e2 square with a check now a pawn captured king again has only one legal square again using the same tactic now black has white king has to move back to and here rook can be captured but uh, this in between move played by fisher is also good as the rook on a8 is now attacking the black sorry white queen and black knight on c3 is protected by bishop on g7 so queen cannot capture uh, black knight so queen has to move to some other place and finally knight is captured so here using the windmill bobby fisher won lot of material and eventually this game was so famous afterwards and it was uh, dubbed as game of the century by chess review in uh, us chess review by in 1956 or 57 issue by some chess journalist so after that um, this game become part of the history chess history so that's all about the windmills and you can check uh, links more links and examples on my blog bye for now and good luck with your chess see you around